Welcome to Film Riot. Today, I decided to shoot the entire episode on my cell phone since we are staying at home. We're doing the stay at home challenge. I wanted to shoot the episodes kind of in that exact same spirit. So the audio is coming right from my cell phone. I'm shooting it on the front facing camera so I can actually see what I'm doing. So the quality is not so great right now, but in keeping with the whole idea of what we're doing and even this episode, there are ways that I can make this look better. Right now, because I am in my office with no lights, I decided to use no pro lights at all for this episode. And again, just my cell phone. This back wall is entirely blown out and this just, this looks terrible. But there are things I can do. Like for instance, since I'm using Filmic Pro, I can set my exposure to that back wall, which then makes my background a lot more pleasing. But now I'm completely in shadows. But I do have an LED light, which is just the lamp from my bedroom with an LED light in it, a, an RGB, $15 RGB LED light, which I just have the lampshade flipped up so it's hitting the top of the lampshade to bounce back this nice soft light. And then I can turn my computer monitor on and that has a big white screen on it that's adding this extra fill. But now with the exposure being pulled to the background, so we're not having that ugly overexposed look going on, a table lamp and my computer screen, we have something that's working a lot better. But today I asked two of my extremely talented DP friends, Joe Simon and Daniel Ruth, to create some scenes using only what they had at their house to see what they would come up with and then give those ideas to you guys. But before we get into that, of course, there is the challenge that's going on right now. Well, it's actually over right now if you're watching this by 5 p.m. on April 2nd. The challenge is closed. We're going to be going through all the submissions for the next few days now, and then the winners will be announced in the next episode. I'm really excited to see all these. It's looking like we're going to get close to 2,000 submissions, so there is a lot to go through. We've already been watching some of them, and of course, there's really great stuff that has been sent in as well. But also, before we get started, started. We are going through something insane, as we all know, and there are some people that are less fortunate than others. And for those of us that do have the means to do it, now is more of an important time than ever to donate to help those people that are truly in some great need. So if you do have the means to help, I completely understand that not all of us do. But if you do, we've put some links below of places that you can donate to help feed families and to help people that are on the front lines of this thing. So please definitely check that out. But with all that said, let's jump into Daniel's first setup, which Daniel's first setup was a daytime interior shot. And Daniel is using his wife's X70 camera, which apparently is not the best in low light. And he didn't have a lot of lights to work with that he could use for this either. So he decided to really lean into a dark and moody sort of look. So while he was setting up, he did say it was very gloomy outside. So he wasn't going to be able to use the light coming through the window. So instead, he just shut his curtains and used his Aperture MX, which is a $150 light. And honestly, you could probably accomplish the same thing by using a couple of flashlights or a couple of household bulbs as well. But he closed his curtains, and since he had no grip gear at all, he used a stool and a water bottle as his light stand. Then some tin foil to help shape that light. And finally, an RGB bulb to add the slightest bit of fill, which again is the light that I'm using right here. I got this light from Amazon in a kit of four for about, I think it was $40, but you can get this light for about 14 bucks just for the single light. Comes with an app. You can put it to any color you want. It's dimmable. It's actually a really great DIY light to have. But with that all done, Daniel had this. Then for his night shot, he had his hallway that he thought would be pretty interesting to shoot something in with all the lights on. It's pretty flat, pretty boring. And again, with his limited resources, he decided to go extremely moody and make this something that was mysterious, a moment just painted by shadow. To accomplish this, he just used those two floor lamps with the RGB bulbs, one in each room. With the only change for this setup being for that close up he did where he took the lampshade off the lamp and put tissue paper over the bulb to make it a lot softer, which he could do because it's an LED light and doesn't get hot. Of course, it's a very specific and sparse look, but the point here that Daniel's trying to make, which I really love, is to lean into your limitations. He had very little to work with, so he leaned into that very dark, moody, silhouetted look. Similar to if you are shooting on an iPhone like I'm doing right now. Sometimes, depending on the situation, when you're shooting on a mobile device, it can look pretty crappy. But if that's the case, you can lean into that look and make it more of a grittier, dirtier look to make it seem like it made sense for your project. A good example is Unsane. That film really lent itself to 
the look of the iPhone. That weird, broken, odd sense that the phone gives you worked really well for that film, but wouldn't work as well for something else. But moving on to setups from my friend Joe Simon. And Joe wanted to focus on lighting environments because that is such an important part to your scene. What your background looks like is gonna be just as important as what your foreground character is shaped like. So for this daytime interior shot right here, right off the bat without doing anything to it, this actually looks pretty great in the room, but that isn't by accident. Joe took the time to observe the different rooms at different times of day to figure out what room at what time of day would lead to the most beautiful light to create this scene. But Joe framed the shot into the corner here to give the shot a lot more depth and leading lines. He also shifted the blinds to control the light intensity and brought in some tungsten lights to mix with the daylight to give it some nice color contrast. Another thing he did to keep the scene from feeling flat is to bounce light through a mirror to get this cool splash across the back wall. Then he shot two small LED lights into a glass door to give texture on the side of the dresser here and the back wall. And finally, a small tungsten light hitting the bed right here as the light from the lamp. What I love about this is it's not a massively drastic change, but it also very much is. It goes from being something that does work, but feels a little bit flat, a little bit underdeveloped to something that really does, as Joe put it, come to life. But let's move on to his night shot, which started looking like this very flat, very boring. This one for me on its own absolutely does not work. So the first thing Joe added was a light in the hallway right here. This gave shape to the frame within a frame. Then he added a light streak across the floor made by this LED light bouncing off of a mirror, which is mimicking what a light coming through the doorway would look like. And the color temperature of this light was at 5600. So that was creating some nice color contrast with the other lights in the room. Going deeper into the scene, the main lights are two reading lamps on either side of the couch giving light to the cushions. Then he added a lamp behind the couch in the middle to give an edge light to the couch as well as some light on the blinds. He also added one more light on the left hand side to uplight the fan and the wall. The corner here was just a bit too dark and it helped him open it up. Then he turned on the outside party lights in the backyard to give something outside the window so it wasn't just this black hole. And that really does help to open up the scene, give it depth and make it, you know, keep it from feeling like it's this closed set. Then he added two finishing touches to the scene so it didn't feel so dead and static since there wasn't talent in there. He wanted to add movement so it just didn't feel like a still image. So he turned on his television to get a flicker across a room as well as a reflection in the window to help fill that pure black window. Then he went outside and used this 300 watt bulb to mimic the movement of a car driving by. And I really love that specific touch. I thought that was an extremely simple and creative way to really bring that whole space to life. And if we go through it like this, flipping the lights on one at a time, you really get a sense of how Joe built the scene out piece by piece, all these puzzle pieces separately coming together to make this complete whole that creates a bit of of contrast because it's not this unified blanketed soft light bouncing off a wall. But that's it, a couple quick and simple ideas to take whatever it is you have lying around your house and take it to a next level. There's so many of my short films that were done with just available lighting, even short films that had a budget. I mean, our short film hall fight that was just all action scene was done all with the practical lamps that were in those hallways. The only thing that we added was that flicking alarm light that you would see in the background, but how all the actors were lit was was just with the practical lights that were there. So sometimes you need very little, if anything at all. And often it's just about tweaking the things that are existing or bringing in simple solutions to really bring the whole thing to life just as Joe did in his seat. But that is it for today. A huge thank you to Daniel and Joe for taking the time to help us out with this. Check out the links in the notes below for more from them. And of course, we have the links for places to donate like I was talking about before. If you do have the means, please consider donating to those who need it. This is absolutely a time where we're gonna get through this thing by sticking together. So definitely check that out. Again, we're going through all the contest stuff. We'll have the winners next week and we might might do this again. We'll, we'll see how it all pans out, but we might do this again. If we do, we'll announce it next week. But until then, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.